Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to City Skylines. We are back on the tsunami map, which is basically a giant custom map that someone made where there's a massive tsunami that's coming towards this area where you get to build a city and try and defend it. Now, in my last few videos, I was very successful at defending against the tsunami, I reckon. We used pumps to suck up the tsunami. We used deflection to deflect the tsunami in different directions, sort of. We even built a Tesla valve and found that even that was capable of stopping the tsunami. However, in the comments, I noticed a lot of you complaining. Complaining that my inhabitants that I haven't actually built yet on this map, they lost their lovely sea view. Because obviously it's quite nice to look out at the impending doom that's heading towards you. But yeah, so this time we're gonna we're gonna build a city and we're gonna try and stop the tsunami without building above land. So essentially, wherever I build my city, I need to make sure they have a sea view. Now, the one thing I'm a bit unsure about doing that, I'm not sure what counts as a sea view. I mean, to me, a sea view would be if you had a property like here that would be your view you got a view of the seat however most estate agents would argue that if you built your property all the way over this end of the map as long as you squint and you can see a bit of blue that counts as a sea view now i'm sort of inclined to agree with the estate agent on this one because i want to make it easy on myself <laughs> But um, shall we shall we meet in the middle? So rather than Matt's sea view and rather than the estate agent sea view, we're going to meet in the middle like a very good compromise, which basically means I need to build a city within this highway, which is absolutely mental. I don't understand why anyone would build a highway that isn't like perfectly straight. Yep, definitely, definitely wouldn't catch me doing that because I only highway efficiency into all my highway designs. So I guess first off, I'm going to build my, my city and I'm basically... I feel like I just want to build it in like a straight line. So literally I might select everything that's in the middle. So from there all the way down to like there and then click this button down here. Boosh, it's deleted. All right, so we'll come down here. We'll link these two roads together. So we've got that. I might do I might do that just because I am a child. I'm going to do the same to the motorway over this side. So I basically just want to link these up like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's... <laughs> Oh, that's got to be up there. One of the best road designs I've ever done. Right, and then I do actually I do actually want a road going through this. So I'm going to grab one of these nice two-lane roads with trees. And we're going to come straight out of there. And we're literally going to do the world's straightest road parallel with the beach over to there-ish. We'll then connect into that as well. Then with this railway, I'm literally just going to take it in a straight line over to there. So it's in a nice bridge. So we've just made the world's longest rail bridge. Uh, but I've reckoned I've engineered that enough that the, the tidal wave should pass straight over it without any without any damage done to the bridge. Right, anyway, let's get on to building the city. So first off, we're going to need a water source for all these people. So if we come into water, I'm going to grab a water tower, maybe a large water tower. I'm going to put them over here out the way, connect them all up with pipes, and then just do a pipe network up the side of there, out that bit, and then... <laughs> And then this can literally follow our straight road and down to that one. Nice. So we've got a water supply for our people and we know water is stored in the bulls. So that's why they're there. We're then going to need some sort of electricity. And I, I feel like I might just shove a dam like along there like that. Because if you look, this is this is like a river. It's flowing from the source up there. It should flow down that way. And I'll hope that sort of that will give us some power. We'll have to see what it does. But if we for now just do a power line from there over to that corner and hopefully these will these will all build and then they'll all have electricity. The one final thing we need though is a water drain pipe. I don't know why it's called a water drain pipe because we all know by now water does not come out of it. So if I know anything about anatomy I think we need to put this somewhere around here. Connect them up to the network and then all that's left to do is turn this road into a city. I think we'll start with some high density living areas. We'll then do some high high density commercial and then some office we want to give people jobs then we'll do some low density houses at the front we'll keep the higher ones at the back because we do we do want to make sure everyone's got a nice sea view and the same with the commercial and then the industrial dot a few hospitals and stuff about a few other unique buildings and then if we press play we should see our city start to grow Ooh, nice so yeah life is pretty good for everyone down here they're they're all pretty happy they've all got a nice sea view of ever pending doom oh wow there's even an amphitheater what the hell fair play game <laughs> 
It never ceases to amaze me, like, how much stuff this game has that's awesome. Right, anyway, word on the blower is there's a big, big tsunami approaching the city. And I guess I've been hired in to try and stop it without ruining their sea view. So, what did we learn from our previous experiences in this? We know that pumps are the best thing to get rid of it. But I'm not allowed to use pumps because they block the view. I feel like the most simple thing to do would just be like loads and loads of canals and stuff. On the assumption that as the tsunami passes over a canal, you should lose the volume of a canal. So hopefully by the time it reaches our city, there shouldn't be any tsunami left. I guess, yeah, let's see if, let's see if that works. So I guess we'll hit save first and we'll call this... Unami. All right, then we'll come down to the landscaping and disasters tab. We'll go onto the water structures, and then we've got all different size canals. I'm going to go with the super big deep ones, so a wide deep canal. And then I guess I just I just start this end, and we do that. And then we move up slightly, and we we go again. And then after doing this about a hundred more times, we'll get distracted and realize we haven't got water in our city. There's no power to the bulls. There's no power to the bulls. So let's quickly just wang some power lines down this edge. Then our balls are now powered and everyone's got water. Nice. Okay, things are good again. Let's continue building these. <laughs> There's so many. Why is the front one filling with water? Wait, you're not meant to go in here yet. You're meant to be a tsunami. Now, by the way, as well, check out, check out my dam. My dam is producing electricity. That's like one of the most sensible dams I've ever created. Fair play. Unfortunately, my railway has just been swallowed by the tidal wave, which is getting very, very close. I should probably, I should probably finish this before everything gets destroyed. So let's hit pause. Let's build some more canals. Let's be annoyed that our road isn't quite parallel to the canals. Oh, that's so frustrating. Uh, but let's also take a moment to appreciate this building, which probably because of the architects is cantilevered over a canal. It's still very, very impressive. Although I'm not really sure how you're meant to get to that dumpster. Still back over here. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look how many canals there are. Right, so the tidal wave is now approaching the canals. And the theory here is that each sort of canal, like you should, as the tidal wave passes over, that volume of water will hopefully stay behind. So as we go over the top and we end up on the other side, these should stay filled with water, although it's a bit turbulent. No, yeah, they are. They're pretty filled with water. So hopefully we're losing volume every canal that we hit. I mean, from above, it doesn't look like it's working like that. But if we head like, a bit closer. Is that wave getting smaller? I'm oh, I'm not sure actually. I feel like we're, we're coming up to like halfway there and I don't know. Is that tsunami like half the height it was? I'm not too convinced but look there's a lot of water behind. That is all I'm saying. If I was like on this rooftop on that helipad and I was looking out there because of the graphics I wouldn't even be able to see the tsunami coming because you can just see through the water annoyingly. Um, so at least at least my citizens they don't they don't know of the impending doom that's heading their way. Um, but yeah still quite a bit of height to this. Although, look how thin the wave has got. There's like nothing left of it. It's just like a vertical wall. Actually, look at the middle. Oh, it might actually work. Look at this. Look at this. This end, we've done it. That's the last bit of wave. It's not... We've done it. We've literally done it. Oh, what's going on over this end though? No. No, my industrial area. No. <laughs> Oh, that was nearly so good. So for some reason, we only saved most of the city. Like from above, you can see everyone we saved. Well, pretty much we saved everyone that like lives somewhere. So all the houses were saved. Although they're a little bit wet over this end. I mean, people have moved out for some reason. Why Why is that? Why has everyone moved out? Oh, is it because you don't have water or electricity now? Because yeah, okay, we might, we might need to protect those. Always shield the bulls. Now the trouble is we've got this we got this blooming river here, so I can't really put canals in underneath. Uh, so that's a bit tricky. I don't know. That might always be the case. I don't know. For now, the fact that the actual buildings didn't get destroyed, I think still means the city is fine, although there's no electricity or water. Well, and this end did actually get completely mullered. Now, I wonder why this end got mullered. Like, is the is the tidal wave stronger this side or something? Don't know, but these guys, they, they have quite a nice view still. Like, they can definitely see the sea over there. And I mean, technically, that is seawater in front of them. So if anything, we've brought the beach to them, thus increasing their property value. Nice, Matt. Good work. Tsunami versus 35 canals. I almost feel like saying canals won. I'm not entirely sure, though. By the way, look how look at the 
sea line. Like the shoreline has been pushed way back because we got so much water in our canal. Right, anyway, let's let's reset this. And what I'm tempted to try this time, like I wanna know if I were to like build the inverse of the tsunami. So obviously the tsunami wave is like it's like a big lump, isn't it? So if I were just to do like one single trench along there, I mean as long as the water gets stuck in it. Surely that should work. Now the trouble is trying to estimate how big this actually is. Like it's it's pretty huge in my opinion. So let's go into our landscape and disasters tool. We'll go to this tab, landscaping tools, and then we can literally make a trench. Now I like to use the level terrain to actually do the trench, but I think to start with I'll just do I'll just do shift terrain. And if I click this button three times, that's the brush strength. If I make the brush very large, uh, then all I gotta do is dig a hole that's sort of as wide as the tsunami so let's dig down you can see the contours move oh no <laughs> i can see you can see the contours move and then i was like actually that doesn't look right now because we've got contours i could actually use that to estimate the height of the wave quite easily like if i just go in the middle of the wave and just build well a nipple up inside the wave so yeah that's roughly the height of the wave so if we just now count contours so we've got one major contour two three and then how how long away until the fourth major contour appears it's there so if we want to play this safe i could put four major contours worth of depth in because uh, there is there's quite a bit of wave behind it so we'll just delete that point we'll come back over to our hole you can see major contour there so we've got one two we're sort of three of the way down so we've got to go till we see the fourth and then we're going to use the level terrain tool so if we just grab that we can say from there one two three four then you know what to play it safe i might actually go to the very bottom of the hole that should just hopefully grab some of the waves behind because there is quite a bit of volume there they're sort of like they're almost half as tall as the main tsunami wave um, and then with our level terrain tool we can literally just make this wider so how wide do we think the tsunami is it's about something like that i mean i i feel like i've actually i've been that a bit bigger but anyway let's build our trench this deep so this is probably gonna take a while i'm literally gonna i'm gonna build this as best i can i wish there was a larger a larger brush tool i love that i'm preparing for this massive tsunami and the game's like you should build a post office to take care of mail deliveries it's like dude there's a massive tsunami coming we gotta build this trench come on game all right so there we go now we have our trench our trench is actually really really big <laughs> Uh, a lot bigger than the tsunami so hopefully that will actually catch it uh, but of course the the people from my city they've still got their their very nice sea view they can't even see the trench so no complaints from anyone down here and hopefully no complaints in the comments either because uh, over here wow <laughs> wow i'm quite intrigued i surely that's just gonna eat the tsunami like i have massively massively oversized that how did that even happen and also up this end where where we've got these these road bridges i've i managed to cut that up which means the balls should be saved as well so yeah here you go the tsunami is entering the trench and surely there is no chance that's getting out. that's literally like twice as high as it needs to be maybe i might have to i might have to redo all this very very annoying but up to the size where it will contain oh god oh god oh oh that nearly escaped that nearly escaped oh it did escape over here the tsunami's still going don't say it's actually still going it's still got momentum <laughs> What? There's still actual tsunami heading towards my city. Uh, thankfully, it does look like it's not going to reach it. Um, but I do feel, I do feel like I possibly over-engineered this. So what I might do, I might, I might bring the base level of the trench up a bit. Because uh, obviously, if you're if you're building a trench like this, you're going to have all this, all that dirt, and like where where does the dirt go? But yeah, now we've now we've contained the tsunami. I am quite intrigued to see like where the shoreline's going to settle. Then we can sort of work out just how big the tsunami is oh no we can't look the grass is moving the grass is already retreating yeah so that is the slight downside with trying to measure like the shoreline is that the grass the grass will always head towards the shore towards the water so yeah we can't actually tell where where it was i'm gonna assume though it was probably roughly there so we, like, we've definitely taken out a chunk of the sea anyway what if this wasn't one trench but what if it was actually two deep trenches because i'm not sure like what a deep trench 
does. Like, if we make this narrower than the actual tsunami, then will the vertical wall still stop it? Or will it pass over? I'm quite intrigued, actually. Let's grab a level and then let's just put this along the middle of the trench. All right, so now we've got two huge trenches, uh, but obviously a lot less volume. So assuming that this width is wider than this width, I'm intrigued to see how much will go over the top. So tsunami enters the first ditch. What happens to the height? It's properly dropping. Yep, it's gone. It's disappeared completely. There's no tsunami. And then it rises up the other side. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Only only a tiny bit came over. Oh, okay. That's quite interesting. So basically my tsunami, it wasn't it wasn't the width. It was the depth. So there's two things I want to do now then. I want to do one very narrow trench as deep as this one. So I'm going to fill in the top one and I'm going to make this bottom one a little bit narrower as well. And then the other test, I want to, I want to keep it the original width but make it a lot shallower and we'll see which one works better a deep trench or a wide trench so for the wide trench we're coming up over half the height so we're going to be way shallower and by the way if you haven't already go check out my merch store we've got loads of merch we've got engineering puns we've got bridge review shirts we've got all sorts real civil engineer dot store all right it's going to be one of those jobs that's just going to take forever so i'm gonna i'm just gonna sit back relax shove some poly bridge theme tune music on uh, one of my favorite things to listen to for menial tasks and then i'll probably see you on the other side do 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 Right, okay, the tidal wave is entering the lower trench. Now, I really cocked up on the height of this, by the way. Like, this is meant to be half the height of the tsunami. It's actually, like, the full height. But still, we know the tsunami has force, and it has pushed itself out of the trench. Oh, wow, that is huge. That's still huge. Uh, guys, guys, you should be on alert. You need to evacuate. Big tsunami still incoming. So the shallow trench really did not a lot, really. I love this bit over here, like the bit where there's, there's like a little road here on very vertical bits of wall. And you can see... <laughs> you can see the tsunami is actually bigger over the top of that. That's quite cool. Uh, but yeah, sorry those people that insisted on a sea view. You've now got a sea, well, a sea touch and smell, not just view. I mean, boosh, see you later. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. So it looks like my tool building survived, but that's about it. So wide trench, that is a fail. Let's try a deep, narrow trench. All right, so I think this one should be a little bit quicker to build. So many of you will be pleased to know I won't be humming the Polybridge theme tune this time. And something about this is quite satisfying. It's almost like Power Wash Simulator, but Land Terraformation Simulator. Yeah, I could I could do this for hours, which is quite handy when I am literally doing this for hours. But yeah, let's just do this bit very very satisfyingly all right so let's start with this trench we'll see how it copes now it is actually quite a wide trench i will probably make it narrower if if this tsunami fails to make it over but there it goes the tsunami is going into the trench will it make it up the other side so the view from here you're like oh look there's a tsunami going into a trench i wonder if i'm safe stood here oh wow and apparently we we very much are i mean it's pretty rough and dangerous down there but it didn't even come close didn't even come close to getting over. Okay, let's make this narrower again. And again, I feel this is quite satisfying to do as well. And then we've got the world's smallest trench. So, well, I mean, sort of. I mean, it's several, several hundred, hundred meters, meters deep. deep. It's, it's, it's quite, quite echoey, echoey and, scary and scary down, down here. here. But from up here, it looks way smaller than the tsunami. So as that all flows into there, is it going to come out this end? Is it going to come? Ooh, ooh. A little bit of water. I got my foot slightly splashed, I think. But no, I think I think we're safe. There's a little bit of a little bit of spillage there, but that ain't gonna do any damage to our Sea View City. Wait, what's what's going on here? There's there's a little bit of water escaped, although I think it's pretty insignificant. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna make it up to there. Nice! Well, now I wanna know what the smallest trench is. Alright, so I'm gonna make the bottom as narrow as possible while still hopefully keeping the depth. So you can see that's a very, very small little V now. I mean we are actually losing a lot of depth. If you look at those contours, yeah, I'm not I'm not too I'm not too confident about this one. Alright, here we go then. World's smallest trench. Imagine if this works, like after all the monstrous. I've built. 
<laughs> All it took was a tiny little trench. Right, so Tsunami is about to enter trench. It's, I mean, it's sort of glitching through the ground. Not ideal. Not ideal for a fair test game. Although, although it's definitely escaped. Oh no. Oh no. Is that enough escaped water to actually make it up to there though? It's still quite a long way for it to go. I'm a little bit more confident this end might make it. Like... <laughs> That wave is huge. Yeah, quite weird, this map. In terms of this end, the tsunami is definitely a lot more powerful than over this end. But yeah, it looks like the waves aren't going to hit my city. So we might water some trees and stuff. But generally, I think we can call that a success. If you want to stop a tsunami, build down, not up. You heard it here first. Uh, just, just don't do that over this side of the map because... Uh, <laughs> This side did get annihilated. Right, anyway, guys, peace, love, and water is stored in the pools. Bye!